Welcome back for the second half of Roadmaster Service Concerns. This time, we're going to concentrate on side moldings, some electrical concerns, and how to make a few door adjustments. Al Kelly is Arlington's trim and electrical expert. Al, welcome. Good morning. There's not much involved in applying moldings to the sedans. The molding is adhered to the car with two strips of double-sided foam tape. On the wagons, we're attaching bimetal trim pieces to plastic clips that are attached to the body. But I want to concentrate on the sedans. Here at Arlington, all the worker does is expose the tape, line up the fixture to the car, and press roll the moldings to get the best adhesion to the car as possible. And that's how the dealer needs to do it too. We try for a one millimeter gap at the top of the molding edge in the sheet metal. With the door open, the fender character line should match up with the molding curve. When the molding is applied properly, you get 100% adhesion and the proper gaps. If the molding is set too high, very little tape actually touches the sheet metal. The gap is either very small or the molding hits the paint. If the molding is set too low, again, very little tape touches the sheet metal, but the gap is very wide. Because these three molding sections were applied together from a single fixture, we should not see panel to panel height differences. We have seen mismatches at the rear fascia, and that's because the rear fascia is installed after the molding. If you ever get a complaint about molding fit, you might have to simply adjust the rear fascia. What's an acceptable fit here, Al? What's normal? The rear fascia molding and rear side molding should be within two millimeters one another. If the difference is more than two millimeters, you can loosen the fascia mounts inside the trunk for that slight adjustment. If you can't get an acceptable match with a fascia adjustment, you might need to strip the molding off and manually reapply a new set. If only one piece needs adjusting, replace that piece. Here's how to do it. Now this is a critical point. Do not try to remove the molding by prying from the top or bottom because it will damage the paint. Instead, start from the end and remove the molding lengthwise. Place two pieces of tape on the sheet metal to help reposition the new molding. I've already used a heat gun to warm the adhesive to loosen it up. Slowly pull the molding away from the sheet metal. Take it slow. That's the key. Then clean leftover adhesive from the panel with a good adhesive remover, followed by rubbing alcohol and water. When you are replacing an entire set, start at the rear of the car so it matches the rear fascia molding. Buick Service Bulletin number 53106 describes exactly where the new molding should be placed. You need to keep in mind that the attachment zone is only one or two millimeters high. Remove the tape covering and install. Wow, Al, you sure made that look easy. Thanks, Chuck. You do need to be very precise with fit and finish details. That's something a customer really notices. You're right about that. A customer should walk up to their Roadmaster feeling they made the right choice. Now let's move inside. I'll show you some other trim fit concerns you can take care of. Sounds great. We know that customers will probably comment if the convenience tray and ashtray are not aligned properly. The convenience tray and ashtray is installed as a module fastened with screws. If the gaps are not even, shim the module to achieve equal gaps or flushness to the surrounding panels. Customers may comment that the third seat load floor contacts the in-gate interior trim whenever the third seat is open. This can damage the in-gate trim. The third seat load floor panel is part of the folding seat module. The folding seat module is attached to the car in about 20 places. If the module is mismounted, a corner of the third seat load floor panel hits the end gate trim. Sometimes the end gate trim can be loose. You need to be sure the lower edge of the trim is securely fastened to the end gate. 
For 1995, a state wagon end gate trim was fastened with four screws. Previous models used only two screws. These two extra screws were added to eliminate any looseness in the end gate trim. Remove the rubber gasket around the module opening to realign the module. Loosen the 20 screws and bolts. Check the three alignment holes in the body. Relocate the module so it is square with the rear of the load floor opening and reinstall the screws. Now, let's talk about the rear trim of this car. If we see a large gap right here at the C-pillar, a customer may mention it. When the car is built, these panels are secured so that the C-pillar gap is very small. What that means is, if there is a gap at all, it should occur in the middle of the rear compartment where it's less noticeable. You do that by repositioning the C-pillar trim assembly as far rearward as you can to close up the gap. Thanks a lot for your input, Al. I wish we had more time to cover a few other trim items. You certainly have a lot of expertise to tap into here. Thanks for appearing in the program for us. No problem, Chet. Well, next we're going to look into body fit. There's a lot about what to do and what not to do. Let's talk with Bart Cox. Hi, Bart. Hi, Chuck. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Well, Bart, we've already covered plenty of topics. I'd like your opinion on door fits, deck lid fit, and what kind of adjustments you recommend. Well, Chuck, let's begin with door fits. Our people work very hard to maintain the proper gaps between all the sheet metal components. Because there's so many variables can affect a door fit, it's one of the most difficult processes to control here at Arnington. I think you'll agree that the cars we build today look very good. One thing to remember is that a Roadmaster door is much heavier than a door of any other Buick model. That's a lot to deal with physically. If a door adjustment is necessary, first of all, look at the rear door in relation to the quarter panel to maintain the perimeters of a four to six millimeter gap. Once that's established, then we look at the front door to rear door relationship, maintain the same perimeters, okay? Once the two are coordinated with the right perimeters, then it makes the insulation of the fender much easier with the proper gap. In my opinion, a dealership technician should only attempt a hinge adjustment as a last resort. When even an experienced technician loosens the door hinges, he runs a risk of creating wind noise, a water leak, or poor fit, or any combination of the three. Once a door striker is secured, and we're assured the flushness from this feature line down, then we look at the belt line area up to the top of the header. Check for flushness here. The gap to the roof. We make the necessary adjustments by controlling the feature line up to here by fitting the header inboard or outboard, closing that, assuring the flushness is there, controlling the wind noise to the roof. Another complaint we have heard occasionally is poor deck lid fits to the quarter panel. Poor deck lid fit to the quarter panel at what we call the beaver tail area can be corrected by loosening the screws on the deck lid, raising the deck lid fore or aft to give the desired fit to the quarter panel at the base of the feature line. Poor fit to the quarter panel on the top of the deck lid can be corrected by loosening or tightening the rubber stop to give the desired fit to the top. Once the feature line of the beaver tail area is flush, the flushes to the top of the quarter is flush, then you keep your eye on the beaver tail area again. If the beaver tail area is outboard or inboard, then you 